Hello and welcome to another Brawl video. Today's deck might be the deck with the highest average mana value of any deck I've played before, as our commander is Kona, a rescue beastie. This 4 mana 4-3 four has a survival mechanic, saying at the beginning of your second main phase if Kona is tapped, in this case we can put any permanent card from our hand onto the battlefield. So that's why our deck is filled to the brim with all these expensive permanents that we can put in play for free. And the deck breakdown is very simple, there's three main categories. We We've got a little bit of mana acceleration, mostly at one mana to maybe play Kona ahead of schedule. Then we've got a lot of ways to help tap Kona without it needing to attack, because if our plan is just to play Kona and attack with it in order to tap it down, our opponent could of course interact by blocking and trading, or they can even cast sorcery speed removal to take out Kona. Instead our plan is to have one of these effects on the battlefield, and then at the same turn we play Kona, we can immediately tap it down with one of our many vehicles or mounts, there's a few other ways to do it as well, that way we can immediately go to our second main phase and start putting stuff in play for free. And then the largest category by far are the payoff cards, these include all the cards we want to try and cheat onto the battlefield, they also include ways to generate additional mana, maybe doubling or tripling the mana produced by our lands, that way we can also maybe hard cast some of these expensive spells instead of having them stuck in our hand. So that's the game plan, very simple, very effective, my win rate with the deck has been very high as well. So now for the deep dive, starting with our regular mana acceleration, we have our Boreal Grazer, can put an extra land in play, then the new Birds of Paradise, a recent addition on Arena, the Lighted Halfling can also make Kona uncounterable, which alongside Cavern of Souls can be pretty useful against blue decks, then we've got Elvish Mystic, Lenore Elves, Utopia Sprawl is also perfect for a mono green deck, and Fanatic Veronos is still worth it since Kona has 4 power, so this can reliably tap for 4 mana, and then we've got Selvala which can also draw us additional cards in addition to making a lot of mana if we can cheat some high powered creature onto the battlefield. And then our ways to tap down Kona include some 1 mana creatures such as the Stalwart, Sentinel and Caretaker, which can just tap another creature to make a mana. We don't need to spend the mana, as long as we tap down Kona it's good enough. And then Springleaf Drum is very similar, built into an artifact. And then we've got our vehicles. The Racer, not particularly effective, but just a cheap vehicle we can accrue with Kona. Then Heart of Kiron, Homestead can maybe find additional lands. Bankbuster is actually a good card, then we've got Smuggler's Copter as another powerful 2 mana vehicle, and the hearse gives us a bit of graveyard hate. Tumblewang's the only mount in our deck, can also tap down Kona in order to saddle it and give us additional plus 1 counters, and then Tyvar can tap down any creature at any point in order to make it indestructible and tap it, and also has a nice 5 mana ability which we can use as a finisher if we have a large creature on the battlefield. And then Caravan at 3 mana, another vehicle that can also tap for mana, so this one's perfect. And Relic of Legends can tap a legendary creature to make a mana of any color. Do want to make sure to be in full control when using the Relic, since sometimes the game will just skip priority and go straight to the opponent's turn without giving you the chance to tap down Kona. So always be in full control, just to be sure. And then moving on to the payoff cards, Fierce Empath can be a way to search them up, so we're typically not going to try and cheat the Empath into play, can still cast it for 3 mana, but this can give us access to whatever creature we need. And then the Disciple of Freilis can also be played as a land, can also sacrifice a creature to draw a lot of cards and gain a lot of life if necessary. Kogla is still on the cheaper end at 6 mana, but can also fight opposing creatures when it enters, maybe destroy artifacts and enchantments when it attacks. And then we get to the 7 plus mana cards. Ancient Bronze Dragon, always fun if we can get it going, can give us additional plus 1 counters. Old Gnawbone, a way to generate extra treasure if it can connect or any of our creatures can hit the opponent, so that can also make it easier to then empty your hand even without Kona's ability. Sifter Worm lets us scry a bunch, can also gain a lot of life, so it can also set up our next couple draw steps. The World Spell can maybe start from Chapter 3 if we have a lot of expensive permanents in hand, and then put them straight onto the battlefield, but can also start from the earlier chapters to accumulate a bit of value. Thorn Mammoth can help us fight opposing creatures. The Chimera forces the opponent to block it and when it dies it draws three cards. Voltborn Tyrant will gain life and draw additional cards when larger creatures enter under our control and when it dies gets replaced by an artifact version of itself. There's a Virtue of Strength as an enchantment we can cheat in play, and then now it will triple the mana produced by our basic lands, which is also why we have lots of forests in our mana base, so that can also help cast the other spells in our hand, which is especially powerful if we have some of our Eldrazi, which have cast triggers, which may not work if we cheat them in play with Kona, but if we can actually cast them then they get a lot better. Then there's Zopondriel doubling power and toughness each turn. 
Cultivator Colossus can also put a lot of extra lanes in play, and that's another way of maybe ramping and being able to cast or other expensive spells. Hornet Queen, good against spot removal, making lots of flying insect tokens with Death Touch. Nix Bloom Ancient, another way to triple our mana, also applies to our mana elves. And then Palaka Worm can gain life, draw a card when it dies. Titan of Industry can also deal with opposing artifacts and enchantments. And Nissa can also be an answer to artifacts and enchantments, can make large tokens, and the Overrun is also going to be deadly in a deck with lots of forests. And then at 8 plus mana, there's the Copper Host Crusher, 8 8 with Trample and Hexproof. We've got Sandworm Convergence, making a 5 5 worm each turn, and creatures with flying cannot attack us. Skullspore Nexus we can usually play for just 2 mana, and that can be a way of doubling a creature's power, especially good on a large trampler. Voring Clank's Voice of Hunger is one of the better ones, since it not only doubles our mana, but will also keep the opponent's lanes tapped down. Then Galta can be incredibly powerful if we have lots of creatures in hand we can put in play for free. Cityscape Leveler also has a cast trigger, so not quite as good if we put it in play with Kona, but still very powerful of course, destroying opposing non-land permanents when it gets a chance to attack. Sundering Titan will trigger when it enters a battlefield and when it leaves, blowing up multiple lanes. Sometimes we do have to blow up our own forest, but hopefully it's worth it and we can blow up multiple opposing lanes as well. The Great Henge can also be cast for just double green most of the time, giving us additional card draw and mana. Titanoth Rex we can also cycle if needed, but also an 11-11 Trampler. We've got the Tarasque, also better if we can actually cast it, but still a 10-10 that can fight opposing creatures otherwise. We've got Portal to Phyrexia as a nice board wipe that can start reanimating creatures each turn. Rust Goliath, a 10-10 Trampler with Reach. Got the Great Worm, a 1616 Indestructible, can also convoke it out. Ulamog, one of those Eldrazi, that's better if we cast it. Authorize, still a 1010 Indestructible, that will exile the opponent's top 20 cards when it attacks. The World Spine Worm, a 1515 Trampler, that will leave behind 3 worm tokens when it dies. Galta Primal Hunger we can also usually cast for double green as a 12-12 Trampler. And then we've got both Amrakuls, the World Anew and the Promised End. And then Earthquake Dragon, a 10-10 Flying Trample, also gets a discount from controlling Author Dragons. And then in our mana base I kept things very simple, 36 basic forests, no fetch land since we don't have any landfall cards in the deck. Then Castle Garenbrick can also give us a mana boost in casting some of our more expensive creatures, also useful for replaying Kona and paying the commander tax alongside it. And then Boseju, an answer to artifacts and enchantments, Cavern of Souls to make Kona uncounterable, and Nykthos can also give us a nice mana boost if we already have some permanence on the battlefield. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing loot, the key to everything, so we do not have a way to tap down Kona. And now we do, although we are missing quite a few lanes to go with it. Maybe it's still good enough. Don't expect too much interaction out of a loot deck. Turn 1 Ragavan is always scary. So opponent's off to a great start. Our land is gone. And they could already play loot, but Sahili first. Play Heart of Kiran, and yeah, we've got turn 4 Kona lined up. So I don't know if that's going to be good enough, if our opponent's going to have interaction at that point. Springleaf Drum, another way to tap down Kona. I didn't really need it. Unless they answer Heart of Kiran. It's going to be a turn 3 invasion, making another servo token. Okay, so they've got battle, planeswalker, artifact, creature. So loot is looking quite good. So first thing we'll try and put in play is probably going to be Vorinclex. Can punish them for tapping their lands as well as give us more mana to work with. Galta, they wouldn't be able to cast at least. Would have been a nice top deck, to be fair. Put in Titan and Vorinclex. Right, opponent plays loot. They still have three mana available. Halfling, so they could still have a counter spell up. Although loot decks typically don't play many counter spells since. They're not very synergistic with the ability, but yeah, we're about to find out if that's the case. 
through Heart of Kiron. Can attack Sahili while we're here. And give Vorinclex a try. Opponent with a bunch of lands, Chromatic Lantern, Invasion of Ixalan. Opponent tapping three lands to play Chromatic Lantern, I don't mind. And Defense of the Heart, I see. So if an opponent controls three or more creatures, they can sack it to get any creature and put it in play. Well, we could try and play around that, or we can just blow it up with Titan of Industry, which is probably better. So we should have a pretty fun turn lined up. Virtue can also generate more mana for us. Take my turn. And tumble bank the draw. So, yeah. Great Henge tapping one land. Then I can cast Virtue, leaving land untapped. Which will then play tumble bank, draw a card of Henge. I guess we also have Boseju to blow up Defense of the Heart. Maybe I don't want to give my opponent an extra land, and I don't see many better uses for Titan of Industry anyway. So we'll crew tapping Kona. And then can Vorinclex attack. Opponent's got three, four, five, six, seven. So I guess we won't quite be able to give Vorinclex enough toughness. So Warren Klex has to stay home. Put in Titan. And destroy and shield counter on Warren Klex looks good, or I can make a Rhino token. Okay, pass the turn. So they wouldn't be able to cast much this turn. And get to untap. And a fierce empath. That's gonna be pretty much game over here. Can get something like Emrakul. Which would be pretty fun, to be honest, with a Vorinclex in place, since we can significantly mess up the opponent's turn. But yeah, opponent's gonna throw in the towel onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Arabella, red-white aggro. We've got a good hand, Utopia Sprawl, into Bankbuster, into hopefully Kona on three. And we've got the lands now to make that happen. And then Voltborn Tyrants might be the starting point, unless we maybe draw into a bunch more lands, then I could start with a Cultivator Colossus. Sentinel can tax us, but I'll pay the one. Now I could also go Bankbuster plus Halfling. Although it's not like I expect many counter spells where we would need the ability. So maybe Bankbuster pay the one is still better. And then hope they cannot destroy my vehicle or my creature at instant speed. It's gonna be Arabella. And a Powerling. Okay. So it's Kona time. And we have one land in hand, so I don't think Cultivator Colossus is at its best. I would rather go for Voltborn Tyrants. And 
gain us some life. Going for a leveler first also makes sense, since we can maybe start attacking and destroying stuff. But now at least if they destroy the tyrants, it's not a big deal. Bonum prevents us from blocking, plays an ornithopter, so how much damage is this powerling going to deal to us? Still only one single trigger from Arabella, so yeah, it's not the end of the world. Bonum's already empty-handed. Now we can just attack with Kona if we'd like. And I guess castle's an improvement. So I can cast a Cultivator Colossus, put a bunch of lanes in play, and then still put a leveler in play for free. Sounds like a plan. Now we could go for Ulamog instead, or a Thorn Mammoth. All right. How about a Galta and have everything in play instead? So crew, attack. This is going to be glorious. Galta, Stampede, Tyrant is my choice. And how about everything else? Fight a bunch with Thorn Mammoth, destroy all of your creatures, and that's going to do it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Sorin, Black White, Life Gain. We've got a Keeper. Hopefully Mystic into turn 2 Silvala, and then we should be able to figure out a way to get Kona and Copter into play. Speaker of Heavens. And a Spring Leaf Drum, so plenty of ways to tap Kona. Just need to keep hitting our land drops as well. Thoughtseize is going to have a look. So they might take one of the payoff cards, they might go for Silvala. Takes a Sundering Titan, at least a Bronze Dragon they can remove before it does too much damage. I'll still try Silvala, I think. Actually gives us a mana boost. And then next turn I should be able to double spell Springleaf Drum with Kona. And put a Bronze Dragon in play, but opponent had to go for the throat. Also could have answered the Bronze Dragon for what it's worth. Alrighty, so... Can just cast Kona at this point. Or we can go Copter and Springleaf Drum. And then opponent doesn't get a chance to answer Kona at sorcery speed. Yeah, that's reasonable too. Could also hang on to the Springleaf Drum since Copter can discard it. Uh, but then if they have Artifact Removal, I may regret this. I guess I'll still be able to play the Springleaf Drum next turn regardless. So sure, I'll pass. So there's Sorin. If they can gain a bit more life, they might be able to transform it too. Speaker attacks. So I could crew Copter and block. So we're kind of assuming our opponent has some removal at the ready. I think I still make them use it here. All right, ambush successful, and we get to loot discarding Springleaf Drum. Although maybe now, if we think Copter's gonna die, we keep the Springleaf. Fierce Empath can get whatever we want, so Ancient Bronze Dragon may not be necessary either. So it's actually an interesting choice. Yeah, you know what, I think I get rid of the Bronze Dragon. So my first turn with Kona may not be all that impactful if all we're putting in play is an Empath, but now Copper Host Crusher is even better. So play Kona. Possible they're keeping instant speed removal for my commander as well. But I guess we're about to find out. Crew the copter, and then can still discard a springleaf drum. Ah, they did indeed have a get lost left over, so they're successfully delaying the combo. 
Back to the command zone. We'll attack with Copter. And now Springleaf can probably go. And can still sack a map token. So we'll be able to replay Kona next turn. Assuming Elvish Mystic survives. Right, now they have a way to exile the Copter. Prevent me from tapping Kona. So getting rid of the Springleaf doesn't look as good now. And... Uh, yeah, I guess we'll try Kona again. Hope they don't have a removal spell left. And then next turn attacking might be good enough to enable it. They could leave Hive back to block. And set up a trade. But then if we can explore a non-land on top, we'll still have a 4 toughness Kona. I guess they could double block it as well. I guess that's their plan here. Double block Kona with Hive. So is there anything I can find with Fierce Empath that would help? I guess we'll go have a look. So next turn our opponent could minus Kaya once again. So Kogla could be an answer next turn, but it's going to be too late. So yeah, there's nothing that really helps right now. So what's the most high impact card we can put in play? Like a Vorinclex or a Hornet Queen is better in the face of 1 for 1 removal. And then I can explore... and Racer. Would be a way next turn to tap down Kona, so I can of force the opponent to use Kaya. But it's not going to be a particularly good top deck otherwise. Yeah, we can just start hard casting our stuff. Yeah, I don't think I bother. And then if they want to trade for Hive, that's fine by me. And Nyx Bloom Ancient, we'll have to wait. We'll go for Hornet Queen. Bond Reprieves, wow, that's uh, effective. So we'll have to try again. And a Necrodominance in the meantime can draw them a lot of extra cards. Opponent's going to draw quite a few cards. Crusher has Hexproof, so that's also an option. I guess what we could also do is play Nyx Bloom Ancients, which still lets us tap Nykthos, which will then make enough mana to cast something afterwards, such as a Hornet Queen. And I guess we even... Get to cast a Crusher here, or I can return Sundering Titan and cast it. And set them back on mana a little bit. So we'll get rid of their black mana, and one of my forests has to be sacrificed for the greater cause. Pass a turn. Castle enter stamped since they don't control any swamps anymore. Goodbye, Sundering Titan. I guess now I regret not uh, targeting a different land since they only have planes left. Oh well. 
Yeah, they might have been thinking it was a death trigger instead of a leaves the battlefield effect. Cleric class, so opponent is gaining a bunch of life. They're gonna draw again with Necrodominance, perhaps. So at 13, they should be able to survive. Although Titan of Industry is not a bad draw, can answer the Necrodominance as well. Although that might be doing the opponent a favor. So Nykthos makes 25 mana. Not bad. Could play Virtue of Strength first. And then we'll see how much mana we can make. So Mirror 30. And then Titan could also go after Authority. If we're not going to present lethal this turn, Necrodominance might still be scarier. So we'll go to Attackers. Ancient Ghost Face. Kaya down. Their opponents at 10 life. And they get to make some spirit tokens. Yeah, blowing up Necrodominance is still reasonable to me. And then I might want to put a shield counter somewhere as well. We'll make it Titan of Industry itself. And I hope they don't have a board wipe. We've got all the mana in the world to replay Kona over and over. Case of the Uneaten Feasts is more life gain. And Lurus can get stuff back as well. We do have a lot of trample damage coming across. 15, 20, and then more flying damage. So I don't know if they necessarily survive here. March gonna take out the Ancients, pitching a bunch of black cards from hands. All right, never mind. So now our opponent's definitely not dead. And Great Worm, we can easily hard cast. So yeah, I'll attack all out. Can put Great Worm in play for free if uh, Kona doesn't die. Wondering whether Elvish Mystic and Empath want to attack into Lurus. I don't think so. Is their opponent still at 3 life? Put in Great Worm. And then now Lurus can only get back Speaker. They can replay Sorin. Blood Pact will draw, but our opponent still seems pretty dead. Awesome, and that'll do it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Gonti, Canny, Inquisitor, which is going to try and steal stuff from our deck. Our hands, functional, but maybe a little slow. Sentinel can eventually tap down Kona. Do need to hit an extra land drop for that as well. I think I still try it. Can cycle the Titanothorax just to maybe find an extra land or creature. Our opponent with a Gilded Goose. Alright, Halfling will do. Can still cycle the Rex, but now I can actually play Kona and tap it down next turn. Putting in play probably a World Spine Worm. And Halfling will make Kona uncounterable, so I don't need to worry about counter spells either. Let's give this a shot. Go to attackers. 
Time down Kona. Move to second main. And Kona triggers. So given that they have a goose to maybe get in the way of the dragon, I think Worm's going to be more effective. And if it gets destroyed, we'll get some replacement tokens at least. And goose makes a food. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, World Spine Worm on turn 3 is going to be good enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have Stalwart to tap down Kona. No way to speed up playing Kona. And our hand's also vulnerable to removal on Stalwart. So this one's kind of borderline. But on the play, it might still be good enough. So we just need to find a fourth land or some other cheap creature we can tap alongside Stalwart. Inspector making a clue is fine. And we found our fourth land, so... Turn four. We can maybe tap down Kona, put in an Amrakul. Although if they keep up instant speed removal for Kona, they might be able to uh, get us. And uh, it's going to be a while before we can replay it for six. So hopefully they tap out here without destroying the Stalwart. Ossification, that's too bad. Yeah, Sorcery Speed Removal would not have done it since we can tap Kona right away. And then Aphelia can also flicker Ossification to get rid of other stuff. Although now I guess with Relic of Legends we have another way to tap Kona. So either way we'll have something left to hopefully tap Kona with. As opposed to playing Kona and having them exile it and then... I would have to replay it for six. Now if they have artifact removal, we're still in trouble. And then let's see, Emrakul has... Protection from instants, but not enchantments. So ossification is actually a way for them to get rid of Emrakul. Opponent's just gonna flicker, combat thresher, draw a card, make a 3-3 double strike. Pretty good too. Alright, so play Kona. I'm gonna go full control here to make sure we can actually tap stuff with our Relic of Legends. Since it may not always hold priority. And then go to second main. Trigger Kona. And then I will be able to play a two mana Galta at the very least. If I put in either Chimera or Emrakul. And then between the two... I guess we'll go for Emrakul. Since I'm probably not going to cast this one anytime soon. 7 mana is still more achievable. So we had a good turn, but uh, yeah, Felia can still flicker the ossification as we mentioned. Get rid of one of them. At least Felia down. Companion draws. So we'll have one of our big tramplers left over. Presumably Galta. And then we can cast Chimera. Maybe find another card we can cheat and play with Kona. Just a land. Alright, so Galta attacks... And then just cast Chimera at this point. White is going to have plenty of ways to exile it so we don't get to draw three. Angel of Invention just to pump the team. That's still beatable. And a castle the draw. So Galta and Tree Shaker can attack. And then I'll go full control in case we need to tap down Kona as well. So Tree Shaker has to be blocked. 
by everything. So let's see. Angel of Invention first, then Thresher. So yeah, even though the opponent's team is going to shrink down, I still need to deal enough damage to each creature here. So yeah, just in case you were wondering, it's not like it allows us to deal less damage to the combat thresher. It can only deal more damage to the first couple creatures. Otherwise, we could have maybe ordered things in such a way that we don't deal more than necessary to all their creatures, since they're going to lose one toughness anyway. Would have been different with, let's say, Death Dutch and Trample, then one damage suffices. Still get to draw three. And so yeah, let's tap Kona, trigger Kona, and put in, I want to say, an Earthquake Dragon, which they cannot chump as easily. And then I could even cast the Great Worm after playing Caretaker as well, with Convoke and Castle Garenbrig. All right, that should do it. Guide of Souls is acceptable. And the White Overlord. So we should have enough trample damage to cross the finish line now. All right, sweet. In loving memory of Emrakul. Which has to just sit by and watch from the ossification. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Marchesa. So Grix's crime deck is gonna have plenty of interaction for our combo. So this might be a tough matchup. This and also missing ways to tap down our creatures. This is better. So mana acceleration and then tumble whack and maybe help tap Kona. Do we see removal for Mystic? Nope, just a uh, loot monger. So opponent is playing around with the heist mechanic. So we'll give Tumblewag a try. Counter can go on itself, so it can maybe survive a 2 damage burn spell or a cutdown, who knows. Opponent's got a Brazen Borrower to bounce it. Well, we'll just run it back, or we could try Kona. I think I prefer playing Kona when we can immediately tap it. Opponent plays Marchesa, so they are tapped out. All right, perfect. So play Kona. Saddle the Tumblewag. Attack and put in Vorinclex, I want to say. And then Vorinclex is going to make it easier to cast our author spells by doubling our mana. Can maybe cast a Tarask to have haste. And yeah, Brazen Borrower hard cast is probably not going to save them. Sweet, onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw facing Roxanne. So this is going to be a true test for the deck. Can we beat one of the better commanders out there? Our hand's missing early accelerants, not that they would necessarily survive Roxanne, but we also don't have a way to tap down Kona. This is better. Caravan sets up Kona. And then Fierce Empath can get whatever we want. What's the best top-end card we can search up in this matchup? It's not an easy question to answer. 
with this hand, maybe something that gives us more mana so we can actually cast Leveler. Could be worth it. Opponent with an Innkeeper's Talent, so next turn they can play Roxane. But it doesn't look like they'll be able to necessarily stop Caravan into Kona. So hoping they just tap out for Roxane. And they do. Okay. Could put in Cityscape Leveler. Which can then start attacking on the following turn. Fine trading Caravan for Roxanne as well. Our opponent will actually accept the trade. So we get one good Kona trigger here to make it count. Maybe Ancient Bronze Dragon's the pick, since that can also make Kona larger so it can keep attacking. If the opponent plays their own dragon, it's unlikely to be 7-7 seven, seven or bigger. And then, uh, yeah, we can connect and hopefully take over. Plus, I haven't seen Bronze Dragon hit many opponents so far, so I kind of just want to roll a d20. But yeah, going for leveler also reasonable, also a bit more susceptible to artifact removal perhaps. And yeah, opponent had a Cogline Diraro, so now they can just fight to trade for Ancient Bronze Dragon. Goes for haste instead, but could have also discarded it for four mana to blow up the leveler, which would have been pretty backbreaking. So now we take eight, we're at ten, but now Kona can keep attacking, so Fierce Empath can get whatever we want. Or, what's even better, put in Nyx Bloom Ancient, triple my mana, and then I can cast whatever. So yeah, this should be a nice turn. Opponent takes it. Get to roll a d20, get 17. 17 counters each, put in Nyx Bloom Ancient. Tripling my mana, so I can cast a leveler, destroying Cogline Didaro. Probably the safest move. And then next turn, Fierce Empath could get whatever we want. Or I guess I can still cast it now. And that's gonna be good enough. So Kona beats Roxanne, that's quite satisfying. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Mondrak. Mono white tokens. So Portal to Phyrexia making them sack three creatures may not actually be game winning. If they have a bunch of tokens they can sacrifice. Now we do have hers to tap down Kona but no mana acceleration so it's gonna be turn four unless we draw some cheap ramp cards beforehand. This hand's functional but maybe on the draw not quite explosive enough. Also don't have creatures to go with a great henge. So I think we take a mulligan. And this seems a little bit more powerful. Plenty of one mana accelerants and then bank buster. Both a way to tap Kona as well as a card draw engine. And then at the very least we can cheat in the dragon. Convergence looks good too. So yeah, turn three we can make that happen. Opponent just with a bunny corn. Not too threatening. If they have removal for Bankbuster, our plan kind of falls apart. Just going to be a restoration of Iganjo. That works for me. Take two. And then what's our best option here? Maybe Sandworm Convergence, since it's the hardest for the opponent to interact with compared to a creature. Although the earlier we get a Bronze Dragon going, the better it tends to be.
this is maybe not quite as good in the face of a sweeper, whereas convergence at least we still have an enchantment making worms. So yeah, I think convergence might have been the better play. Even Zapondrail we could have made indestructible in the face of a sweeper. Opponent ditching a knight errant. All right, we get to untap and portal to Phyrexia the draw. So opponent keeping up four mana. Is this a subtle wreckage? Is this a wandering emperor? It's hard to tell. Can start by drawing. And then I'll go to attackers just with a bronze dragon. And then I can still tap down Kona. So I'll go full control here so we can tap Kona before the second main phase. It is indeed a Wandering Emperor. Alright, so they'll exile the dragon instead of Kona now. Sadly, don't get to roll my d20. And then what do we choose to put in play? I think it's time for Convergence. Alright. And then now might be a good time for a portal to Phyrexia. Although our opponent's going to be able to maybe play Mondrak and then make a pair of Samurai and keep Mondrak in play. And that's what they'll do. Alright, so portal still going to be pretty effective here, I think. If I draw a land, I can also hard cast one of my seven drops. A virtue of strength doesn't have anything to return. So maybe start by drawing with Bankbuster. And then just tap down Kona. Put in Portal. Their board's gonna look a little bit less threatening. Actually, what I should do, or what I should have done, is maybe tap Mystic and then put in Virtue of Strength, and then we can just hard cast Portal to Phyrexia. Yeah, so if I tap Birds and Mystic, I would have had access to 15 mana. I guess still not quite enough to hard cast two of these. But I'll cast a Portal to Phyrexia. And then next turn we can play Zopondriel before attacking. Could have maybe cast a 5 mana Rust Goliath. Alright, pass the turn. So yeah, opponent's fighting the good fight. Horn of Gondor can also get out of hand pretty quickly with Mondrak especially. And a journey to nowhere can exile my commander now. That's fine. Can easily replay it and still tap it in the same turn. But yeah, we need some flying or big trample threats since Horn of Gondor is gonna quickly overwhelm us otherwise. Okay, so now we're looking at Bangbuster draw card. Play Kona. And we can cast Zopondriel. Put in a Rust Goliath. And that can be pretty effective here. Opponent can jump with the tokens, which makes Horn of Gondor less threatening next turn. So they're actually going to keep the tokens and jump with a bunny corn. Yeah, I think that might actually be the correct play. But now we've got a huge trampler, which will double with Zopondriel. So we might still get there. Wedding announcements. 
makes a human. And yeah, Horn of Gondor also cares about humans. So they can activate this afterwards. But there's still only one ones. So yeah, time to move to attackers. Just double checking here. I guess we'll crew Bankbuster. And attack all out. Bone makes eight one ones. But that's still not going to be enough to survive the attack. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Kaito, Bane of Nightmares. So they cannot actually use the ninjutsu ability from the command zone, since it's not one of those special ninjutsu from command zone abilities. This hand's got ways to tap. What we don't have is some payoff card, but uh, I'm pretty confident that we'll find something. And Copter can also maybe help us draw in this card to find some creature we can cheat and play with Kona. So turn one birds. Seems better than a caretaker. And that sets up a turn to Selvala. Bones got the signets. Alright, so I can make an uncountable Kona, draw a card with Selvala. Or I could just go for a Copter and Caretaker and then immediately activate Kona the turn we play it. But given that we do not have something to cheat in play, I think it makes more sense to try this approach. Draw a card, there we go, Chimera. So now just play the Caretaker. And then next turn we can time down Kona, assuming it doesn't get destroyed. It's gonna be a Satoru. And we get to untap, so no need to trade for Satoru when we can use a Copter to tap down Kona. Although we could even hard cast a Chimera here, which is pretty funny. Yeah, I guess we'll um, go with Copter. Tap down Kona. May as well make mana with Caretaker. Put in Chimera, see what we draw, and then Sylvala can still make a bunch of mana. Alright, pass a turn. And our opponent's gonna scoop it up. Chimera can force them to block and eat all their creatures alive. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. This hand is all finishers and no way to tap. This is better. So turn one mystic. Might just skip the grazer since we don't have a ton of lands. And then we've got multiple vehicles to tap down Kona. Opponent with a Gorehound. Utopia Sprawl's good. So name green, can play Caravan. And then next turn play Kona and immediately tap it. May as well play Grazer, I suppose. And then how good is Ulamog in this matchup? At least it exiles instead of milling, so Alicia cannot get those creatures back very easily. So our opponent needs to have instant speed removal for Kona available, and then even if they do, I can still probably play it for 6 mana in the near future. So I don't really mind trying. Crew or vehicle can also attack for 5. And Kona triggers. So 
say hello to my little friend. So yeah, we got to see Mono Green Kona in action. And the win rate with his deck has been pretty ridiculous so far. I'll put up the result on the screen as well. But uh, yeah, overall this deck seems pretty busted and most people maybe don't respect it as much as they should, since if you see Kona as an opposing commander you absolutely need to have a hand that can either maybe deal with artifacts or be able to deal with a 3 toughness creature at instant speed, so you can immediately take out Kona before it gets a chance to trigger, otherwise it might already be too late. But of course more controlling decks with both counter spells and instant speed removal are going to have a pretty good time answering Kona, and then you're going to be left with a handful of expensive spells that you may not get a chance to cast so it does of course have some vulnerabilities but right now i've been having a good time with it so that'll do it for today's gameplay want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day